Hey everyone, uh, my name is Tomas. I'm, uh, I'm in the last semester of the Media Studies program. And uh, first, as well as uh, my other um, grantees over here, uh, I, just, I want to thank you also. One year ago, I was also uh, sitting in the same presentation, uh, kind of like brainstorming in my head, thinking about what was going to be my project or what was it that I, I, was, I wanted to challenge myself with. Um, not only the fact that going to another country where I you know, I haven't uh, ever been, was in and of itself a great experience, but how can I challenge myself into actually making it something, uh, you know, worthwhile and meaningful, uh, probably down, you know, after it. So I came up with an uh, idea, uh, basically it's a research documentary uh, that I named Sounding Walls. Um, it's a documentary that explores music as a tool for youth empowerment. And um, I'm, my background is mainly in music and in media. Uh, I was also a music teacher for kids back in Colombia, where I'm from. Um, I've been always uh, kind of interested, interested in the way that music plays a, a big role in people's lives, uh, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. Um, I think, well, it definitely is a, like a universal language among different cultures, and uh, it, it doesn't matter where you go to, even though, you know, as you were saying, that it's very hard to communicate the language that you don't speak. Sometimes I think music crosses that barrier and makes it even easier. Um, India has a truly well, rich culture and set of traditions. I know Joe also experienced that not only like in the tourist areas where, where you know, is, is the, like the first barrier of experiencing people, but actually when you go and delve deeper, uh, you get a whole different story. And, um, well, of course, its music is one of the big and most important elements uh, of its culture. I guess, well, with, with several thousand years of, of history, um, it's not just about Bollywood or, or Slumdog Millionaire, but um, but there's also a lot, a lot like uh, even each person, even uh, each community within each city. Uh, you can also say that Mumbai is a completely different country from from Delhi. Um, it has a lot of uh, a great mix of cultures, traditions, and, and history at say all at, at once. And although it can be a little bit overwhelming at once, but after that you just understand that uh, they're just people like you and me, obviously in different uh, situations. But uh, but it's very it's very interesting. Um, after that, well, understanding that music is uh, well part of this globalized and uh, ever so more you know globalized uh, country or or world that we live in right now. Um, I, will, I wanted to know how music influences uh, the younger generations among that globalized environment, uh, disregarding what country they're from. So that's why I got in touch with Music. Um, it's an organization that is based in Mumbai and with music centers in Jaipur, Delhi, and, and Pune, among other uh, little towns. Um, this was founded by Australian cricket player, uh, Brad Lee. You can see them right there. Um, he's, well, as many of you probably know, cricket is uh, like, probably the most watched uh, sport in, in India and it's uh, very famous, everyone is completely uh, like here with football obviously. So Brad Lee was uh, a complete like phenomenon over there um, and you can see probably in the, in the music uh, YouTube channel there are a lot of videos that promote and obviously for fundraising efforts but you can see how people just you know go over him even more than all the, you know Bollywood, uh, Bollywood stars. So one of the most important things that I considered uh, when thinking about the project was that I wanted to document my experience. Um, again, I come from a music and, and media background. I like audiovisual uh, projects. So I wanted to well, to document this and document how music is actually a protagonist in, this, uh, in these kids' lives. I started to think about what would be the best way of uh, getting to know these kids and uh, their experience with music and how it has played a role in their environment. Um, the first uh, place that I, go, uh, that I went to was Darabi. Uh, Darabi is uh, probably one of the largest slums in Asia. Uh, I think right now there are other slums around Mumbai that are actually uh, surpassing that, that uh, yeah, the, the bigness, you know, the, the length of Darabi. And um, we went there with Astrid, which was one of the, well, she's one of the translators and she's one of the music staff uh, that works at music, at the Music Foundation. And well, initially, my main goal was to talk to the kids, but through the organization of mobilizers, we found that um, their parents were very interested in talking about their kids and music. Um, 
at the beginning I, I obviously didn't know what was uh, what I was going to encounter so I was saying all right at least if I get the stories of at least three kids that are you know living in, in, in the in the slums and working with music uh, it's going to be a great experience but more and more people just got you know people uh, got interested in talking about their experience their parents uh, they even some of them took off work and as you know the wages are very low but it was even more important to them than going to work to to talk about what they felt about their kids and, and, and the music foundation. Uh, well, for some of them, obviously, it was well, some of the first times that they actually met someone from the organization because, uh, well, it's, it's a very busy life. Um, Govandi, which is, uh, well, another slum, the Mankur Govandi, uh, has sprung up from the base of the DNR dumping ground. It unfortunately has the lowest human development index in the city and is constantly like in the news for uh, malnutrition deaths. Um, and one of the biggest problems in this growing slum is unemployment, obviously, and the fact that parents more, more than often disregard what their kids are up to. So there was a study that recently showed that uh, there's even more probably uh, than 1,500 kids are drug addicts. Uh, whatever they, they, they can, because obviously one of the phenomena to that attribute to that is that they're not going to school, they don't have uh, obviously uh, like after school programs. And, um, and on the other important fact uh, is that child labor is uh, on, the, on the rise, uh, especially in the slums. Um, so this is why the music centers uh, within those, these communities have been so important. Um, so through our guiding as a person through music, um, well, this, this curriculum places a specific like focus on, on literacy, obviously, and, and numeracy. So teaching children basics in English as well, and math, through music, uh, to support their formal classroom activities. And well, to instill knowledge like among the children who are not in school. So basically the aim of the program is not only music and dancing and, and singing, but also using music as a tool for development, knowing that these kids come from a very vulnerable background and they live constantly in that same background. Um, it's, it's a very well, tough situation to see them where they come from, uh, but then immediately when they enter these music centers, they, they you know, they're kids just enjoying sharing with people, uh, being very, uh, you know, uh, extroverted. And through the interviews, uh, we got to see that, well, and, and the video sessions, uh, we experienced how these kids spent all well, the entire afternoons practicing. And this was the first time the organization was actually paying attention to what the kids were saying. As I mentioned before, the audiovisual uh, projects that they have is always to for fundraising efforts. So they always show that Bradley is supporting this, and and they haven't shown actually what the kids are saying, uh, some with actual results of uh, where they started and now where they are at. Um, Obviously, as we were talking about India, well, India offers a lot of uh, history and culture and tradition. Um, Mumbai, it's a little bit difficult in terms of, it, it's way, I, I believe it, it's a little bit more chaotic, not only because of the traffic, but it's also very hard to, to take footage or, or film around the, the, the city. Because, especially after the terrorist attacks of 2008, um, you know, you, you can't just take the camera out in the train station and take a cell phone picture, it's very hard. So I had to kind of like manage my way to get more footage uh, both from, because I wanted to see how was the environment, not only, you know, a talking head telling, oh yeah, my experience in music is nice, etc., but also try to engage not from the version of the slumdog millionaire uh, version of India, but also like the normal city, uh, how they commute, how they uh, engage with people within the, you know, their, like the rhythm of the city and the rhythm of their own day-to-day uh, -day activities. Um, I also got to experience Independence Day, and uh, which was well very cool, I, and, and another festival, which was very funny, called uh, Govinda, which uh, is based on, on Krishna, uh, one of the gods. And the idea is that they make human pyramids, um, probably about nine people on top of each other, uh, to try to break a bowl filled with butter. So it's a very super dangerous thing. I mean, I saw like I don't know. In, in the span of two hours, probably 30 different human pyramids at the same time going up. And you can see, you know, a nine-year-old kid just go down the floor and then really just walking around. So I was like, oh my god, this is super dangerous. And um, and he was the only one with a, you know, with a, like a little vest. And I was saying, you know, it, it didn't work. And the other one um, that I attended, that, that I was uh, there to experience it was uh, Ganpati, which is uh, when they, uh, it's a 10-day preparation when they um, take the, um, uh, their god, um, what's the name? Well, 
kind of thing. Uh, the, Ganesh. Well, yeah, Ganesh, sorry, yeah. And they just carry it around, and uh, the little ones until the big one is when they submerge it in the water. It's also a little bit dangerous, sometimes people just think they're floating, but after they let the little monument go, then they realize that they're actually drowning. So sometimes it's also dangerous, and uh, well, it's not very big. And finally, um, well, it, it was a great experience overall, the documentary. Hopefully, it's going to be, I'm editing right now, uh, so it's going to be finalized by the end of the semester. Um, it'd be great if, uh, once I put the, the teaser in the website, um, also like through the China Institute, you guys can follow it. And uh, probably the, the, like the one piece of advice, I remember the first blog post that I wrote was actually talking about how overwhelming it was actually just to go out from the, from the place that I was staying and the, you know, every single detail, the sound, the smell, the, the site, it was very different from what you experienced and I wrote, you know, that that was very overwhelming, you know, seeing a bunch of cows and, and a lot of dogs all, all over the place, you know, just sitting in the middle and it's, which is funny, the, the rickshaws and the taxis don't, don't honk at them, they just, you know, drive by, but it's, if it's like a pedestrian, they do honk, so it was, uh, and, and the, like, the commentary was, uh, keep an open mind, and I guess that's like the first, uh, like mindset that you that you have to have uh, if you go to these countries and you haven't experienced them before, it's great to keep an open mind. And from there on, it was just you know absorbing uh, the majority of the things that you lived through, the people, the, the stories. Um, it, it was great. So yeah, hope you apply it. It's gonna be great. Thanks.